Murphy is a crime-solving novelist, you know him as a Green Lantern, and you know him as the best Goram captain in the verse. <laughs> Give a huge Phoenix welcome for Nathan Fillion! Are you ready? I was once a passenger 
at 193. Sweet. At the uh, Indianapolis 500. Screaming and peeing my pants. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. Indianapolis 500, they go in a circle, which means you're always headed straight for a wall. <laughs> always. Mine was just on two wheels. It was a Suzuki uh, Pirate. That is incredible. Um, I just wanted to tell you from all my friends on Twitter that couldn't be here today at this con um, that we just appreciate you reciprocating our passion for you and your work by spending time with us at events like this and just doing something really simple like retweeting or replying to us on Twitter like you did with me with my tattoos on real 7 2 Oh, very nice. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much, Sherry. Sherry. Sherry, thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you very well, much. You know what? Your kindness to others inspires others to do the same. Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. Sherry, I don't know if you know this, sometimes I go to these, and I, I wish, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll go to my junk drawer and I'll pull out stuff and I, and I give it out to people who, um, I didn't bring anything today. <laughs> I, want, I want you to have my watch. <laughs> What time is it? <laughs> is there another question? Do you have another question? Over on this side. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering if Firefly had gone on longer, what, yes. is, what is something you would have hoped to have gotten to do with either just Val or just like, the story in general? Alan Tudyk constantly pitched episodes. Episodes, ideas, he had a, a plus, his mind was always moving. And he wanted to do an episode that I thought was really cool, where we were hired to go to this planet that was, one side of it is perpetual night. It's always facing away from the sun in orbits. And on that night side were dogs so wild and so vicious that they could not be contained. And some guy, some evil, dark, overlord, criminal guy, wanted them for dog fights. So we were hired to go catch these dogs. We have this this flask of musk, some kind of musk that attracts them, and we're out there, we're supposed to get them, and Jane is farting around doing something stupid, and <laughs> <laughs> we're covered in musk. And then you hear the howls. <laughs> Cut to, open the door! <laughs> Run into the ship, dogs chasing us, we get inside, Managed to close the door up, we managed to get in, they're all in the cargo hold. Great. Now it's a long flight back to this criminal overlord. And in the meantime, River goes in there and domesticates them. <laughs> I, I, the only thing I have left is my bracelet. I can't give this away because I'm seeing my friend who made it for me. I'm seeing her tonight, so I have to be wearing it when I see her. But I, I, I wish I have a watch. <laughs> give me a watch. <laughs> Get
You get really upset on Twitter. <laughs> I'm gonna. What, what's your name? Alec. Alec. Excellent question. First of all. Second, you're obviously an incredibly handsome and talented man. Thank you. You are. <laughs> Here's where it gets weird. I was, Firefly was the best thing that had ever happened to me, and, and, and to this day, in a lot of ways, it still is. In a lot of ways, it still is. <laughs> Having that thing canceled broke my heart that not even 28 pints of chocolate ice cream <laughs> could satiate or, 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 or fix that heart. When I got Serenity, I got it back. That's all I wanted. I wanted it back. And I got it. In the best possible way. It's really hard for me to say it's not enough. Because I got everything I wanted. So I want to be very, very careful in my thoughts and in my wishes and in my gratitude that uh, I remain thankful for having another chance. Great question. Thank you. I wish, uh, I wish, uh, I wish I had something. Your pants! I don't want you to have my watch. Next question, please. Sir, hello. Hi. Um, so, I was here. <laughs> Excellent question. Um, being uh, a guest on someone's show or on a set, uh, it, it's uh, that's what you start doing. You don't, it, it's very rare that you go, yeah, sure, show, sure, knock it out. <laughs> you, you schlep along and you take little tiny parts uh, along the way. Uh, being a guest on someone's show is much like being a guest in their house. If you went to someone's house and they never spoke to you, and you didn't know where the bathroom was, and you were hungry, but you're not going to go into someone else's fridge. It's an awkward time. Uh, I've been on shows where uh, you're a little more than a speed bump, where they barely slow down when you're there. I've been on shows where they say, hey, come on outside, we're going to go for a smoke. I don't smoke, but you talk. Come chat. <laughs> uh, we're all going to this place for lunch. Please join us. Uh, places where they make an effort to make sure you're comfortable. You're either pinching that baby <laughs> or not pinching hard enough. I'm just kidding. I love babies. Okay, good. <laughs> Probably upset about Firefly being canceled. <laughs> when someone treats you well uh, and you're relaxed and you're comfortable, all you have to worry about at that point is your job. I just want to do a good job. When they're not treating you well, all you can think about is, when do I go home? Please get me out of here. This is the worst. So, the thing I appreciate most is kindness, courtesy, consideration, respect. What I think we all deserve. Come around and watch. Time flies. I think she's going somewhere. Hang yeah. on. And in my defense, it was on Dr. Horrible. Um, but after that, I saw you on Firefly. Love you. But after that, I saw you on Buffy. And I thought you were creepy and and I still hate it. Waiting in 
in line for a famous person. So I was actually wondering who you would wait in line for to see at a convention. John Ratzenberg. I just did it today. <laughs> I watched Cheers like crazy when I was a kid, and um, hearing his voice is like talking to family, because it's so familiar. I've heard it so much. When I hear his voice, I go, oh yeah, it's me. He doesn't know me. Who would I wait in line? Uh, anybody, pretty much anybody from the Star Trek yes. universe. I was fortunate enough to uh, sit down and uh, have dinner with almost the entire bridge crew, save for the captain and Wesley Crusher, um, at one dinner. I've had dinner with Wesley Crusher, with Will Wheaton, but uh, at one dinner we had um, uh, LeVar Burton, we had uh, Marina uh, uh, Sirius, Sir, Sir, Sir. that's what I said, <laughs> Jonathan Frakes, uh, Brett Spiner, um, uh, Michael Dorn, everybody, everybody was there. Oh, what a great time. <laughs> Half the time I'm nudging the guy next to me. This is so cool, I'm having dinner with Star Trek. <laughs> and Brent Spider says, I, you've told me six times. <laughs> one of the best parts, uh, my, one of my favorite things, this is my favorite thing, by the way, to do at panel at, at uh, cons is the panel. See where you guys are at, and when you laugh at my crappy jokes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Second favorite thing, I get to meet all, all these guys backstage, and it's kind of like being in a secret club. Hey, hey, uh, I don't know you, and I don't know you, but uh, I was signing autographs next to you, and I saw you in Toronto the last summer. Yeah, we're in the same club. It's great. It's a lot of fun. Pretty much anybody. <laughs> Have a watch. Good job. Right over here. Hi. No, hi to you. I've never had a job last this long. It's weird. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm about to start season seven. It's I work with uh, a lot of talented and amazing people. So, so many of whom, guys, I can't stress this enough. So many of whom you never see because they're never on TV. A huge crew of really incredibly hardworking people who are incredibly talented and who love their jobs and who are a pleasure to be around. I'm going to remind you of an episode. I don't know which one it was. It was Castle. <laughs> there's, there's been a lot, and I'm an old man, so. <clears throat> I was in the interrogation room. Uh, it's Beckett. It's Castle, and we're talking to some kind of uh, rapper guy who wants to. He goes, "I'm so glad I'm being arrested because I've been." Ups my street cred. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He says, Am I gonna get my mugshot taken now? Because I brought my lighting guy. <laughs> I said, Guys, we have nothing but lighting guys here. Let's get the creepiest looking one and put him outside the window. <laughs> so we did. <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> so when, when we, he goes, I got my lighting guy here. And we look to the window, and there's this dude with a long goatee and tats all over him. He's shaved, and he goes like this. <laughs> and I like this. That's one of our crew guys. That's one of our guys. I love that. Come, come watch. That's a Dodge Challenger. Okay. That is a Dodge Challenger. I want to say the year was a. Seven. 
Yeah, probably not even from a movie. <laughs> we're on 73, I think it was a 73 or 73, a Dodge Challenger. Dodge Challenger. When you were doing 60, it felt like you were doing 180. Because <laughs> this, that, that motor gets right in you. And my slip in it. Oh, no, 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 no. That's, um, that's, uh, they, they hand you those things to, to use on TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to sign up for that. Yeah, yeah. Have a watch. <laughs> Thank you, Angel. Hi. And you are? Kayla. Kayla, someone's standing behind you. Don't look. <laughs> Don't look. Do you look? I just wanted to know, since it's probably really silly to ask who your favorite character you've ever played is, I wanted to know what was your favorite part about playing Captain Mal? <laughs> I learned a lot playing uh, Captain Malcolm Reynolds. I learned a lot. I learned, a lot. I learned uh, lots and lots. <laughs> I had an idea as to what acting was, and that idea evolved or changed or flipped entirely uh, once I uh, worked with Joss Whedon. I would say, hold on, I would say, if I'm. <sighs> There are actors who talk about acting like, don't talk to me and don't call me by anything other than my character name when I'm in character. I'm not into that. I'm sorry. Some people, I think, maybe find acting very difficult and they have to go to extremes. That's fine because they do wonderful work. That's not my flow. Not my jam, folks. <laughs> I pretend. I don't like to get shishi foo foo about process and how I pretend and all that kind of stuff. I, I just do what I do um, and um, don't like to uh, torture anybody with the process. However, there were times, it's goofy I know, there were times when we were filming Firefly when everybody's looking at you and they're talking at you and they're calling you captain and they're talking to you like they're the captain and you're sitting in the chair like you're the captain and sometimes, for a second, you feel like you're the captain. <laughs> there were times, uh, on a break, or when I was like, I gotta go memorize these lines, and I'd go to a, we had two sound stages next door to each other. One had the big uh, cargo bay in the med lab, and one had the, uh, the entire top floor from front to back. And I would go on that one, or the other, when, when they weren't being used. And I'd be walking around the kitchen, sitting in my rocking chair, the rocking chair was Miles. <laughs> doing my lines, walking around, putting my lines in my pocket, doing them out of my head, trying to get into that headspace, doing the actor shishi foo for stuff, and for suspended moments, you look around and that place felt like home, and it felt like you belonged there, and you felt like the captain of a spaceship. Those were pretty cool times. <laughs> I'm gonna watch it. Question over here. Um, hi, a uh, huge fan. Uh, this is really for uh, my mom. She's a huge, huge fan of you. So I wanted to ask you about uh, Doctor Horrible Two, and if you knew anything about it or what that was Because I would love for that to happen. I know the title. I know how it opens, and it's essentially the the the, the, the bare bones of the, how the plot starts. I know the title of two songs, and I know everybody's super busy right now, especially Joss, doing I can't remember what. <laughs> Some small but once, once everybody get frees up, I know it's something we want to do. Sometimes, okay? I go on, but apparently it's 6.44. Hey, remember watching. Okay, well, thank you so much. Yes, sir? Yes, I had a question if you had taken the opportunity to pitch uh, Bruce Campbell as that poser in a parka, aka Jenny Snow, to Josh Wheaton. And further, everybody's familiar with your, your acting skill and what you've been in, but uh, maybe you can give us a little bit about how you feel about the whole musical side of Dr. Horrible. First of all, Bruce Campbell as anything. Let's pitch that. <laughs> I've, I've 
had uh, Bruce Campbell to my home, uh, little parties I have at the house and whatnot, and uh, Bruce Campbell comes, and people come up to me and go, oh my God, you'll never believe who I just met. <laughs> Bruce Campbell? <laughs> yes! <laughs> He's awesome! <laughs> but like, for real. <laughs> he makes quite an impression. He's a really great guy. Um, so, it, yes, I would pitch him for anything. Second party question was, how do I feel about the musical aspect of Dr. Horrible? Was that it? Yes. Sure. As a, yes, right. As a rule, when Joss Whedon calls and says, hey, would you like to, you say yes. That's the rule. And he called me and he said, hey, um, my brother and I, uh, my brothers and I, and we're, we, we wrote this thing. And uh, we're writing it now. And it's going to be pretty funny because it's going to be great. Uh, it's, it's called Dr. Horrible Sing Along Blog. And it's going to be Neil Patrick Harris. We want you to come in and play the superhero who's the dick who ruins his life. I said, yeah! I want to ruin Neil Patrick Harris's life! Oh, you mean to okay. So I said, yeah. And he said, and it's a musical. I went, yeah. Yeah! They were uh, very good about helping me out through that. I can carry a tune in a bucket. I really can't. When people say, hey, if uh, Dr. Horvath was on Broadway, would you play your role? Uh-uh. <laughs> Sorry, man. If Mr. and Mrs. Smith come uh, 2,000 miles from I don't know where in the United States or across the oceans to say, I want to see a Broadway show, and they wait in line, and they pay the big money, and they get in the seats, and they're dressed up, and the curtains open, and I start singing? Sorry, that's Broadway? <laughs> There's incredibly talented, well-trained people for that job. Like Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> Who's ruining my life. <laughs> By raising the bar every time. But, um, I tried to stop me from doing Dark Horrible 2. I right, watch, buddy. Thank you. And this idea. Oh, You've got another eye, right? Put, this, put pressure on that. Um, elevate it. Shut the eye. Put something under her head while she leaves there. Sir. Ah, please call me. Thank you for coming and bearing the heat with us in Phoenix. I know you have a very busy schedule. That's very kind of you. I really appreciate you coming here. Um, my mom is a huge fan of Castle, and she sent me a text. Um, she's recovering from knee surgery right now, and she wanted to know if I could give you a kiss for her. She said, please. And you know, you can't disappoint your mother. You gotta do what your mother tells you to do. You just got to. It does have booth time. Two things I'm totally not into. One is being manipulated. <laughs> Two is kissing strangers. <laughs> yeah, I know, I'm real sorry, everybody. Can I have a hug? Can I have a, you don't ask it of your plumber. I don't think you should ask it of me. And if I kiss one person, I gotta kiss everybody. <laughs> but why don't I give you a watch? Your <laughs> other question was, is there gonna be a musical on Castle? Uh, although it may appear sometimes, and rightly so, that I am in charge of Castle. <laughs> I get it. I play the title character, my face is all up in there. I'm super awesome in a lot of different ways. I'm not in control. And don't even know what's going to happen next season. Musical episode? Probably not, but you never know. <laughs> Let's just say how do you mind. It's all we made up. <laughs> Split my pants. <laughs> yeah, right? Split my pants. Firefly, those pants, they're not, um, 
they're not like a denim, they were like a canvas. They were hard and uh, thank goodness not chafy. <laughs> they didn't have any give. And if there's something I've got in spades, ladies and gentlemen, it is boot time. <laughs> One time, uh, we were filming the scene in the desert where it was the war. We filmed the war before it all happened for Mal. There was all the explosions, and it was him and Zoe and against the world. It was crazy. And I was just chilling out, and I sat down on a rock. Big, big rock. I sat down on it with brick. <laughs> Couldn't even depend. <laughs> Another time was I was um, uh, in the pilot. Kaylee had just been shot. And I was put her up to take her to the med lab. This is no fault of her own. This is just nothing to do with her. I just bent down to go get her. And... <laughs> She's all like, you're supposed to pick me up now. No, no, I, I got it. I'm gonna need the pants. <laughs> and one time, I was just standing there doing nothing. <laughs> Don't even know what to say about that. Come grab a watch.
That's right. They like me now. filming a romantic scene, first of all. It's not romantic. <laughs> it's built to look romantic, which is, I think, the art of it. Our show does it very, very well. While all that's going on, remember when I told you about we had this huge crew that you guys never see? You turn those cameras around. There's 20 guys going like this, holding something, working on something, watching you. Waiting for you to get it done. <laughs> That's awkward. You're in your skibbies, bouncing on a bed with some lady. Weird. <laughs> That's awkward. Come here and watch. Good catch. Good catch. Would you like fries with that? Big man crush on you? Bromance. Uh, we know that uh, Sing Along Blog is coming out uh, hopefully soon. Sooner. Um, how do you prepare for the first one when it came out? And do you sing in the shower? And if you sing in the shower, what's your favorite song? We're talking about Dr. Home? Yes. Yes. Uh, when I'm around, even here with you guys, I, I um, uh, you remember what I said about it's hard to make people laugh, it's easy to make people laugh, let people laugh at you. I pretend to be incredibly vain for guys. <laughs> like that. We, um, when I would do, uh, for example, when we go, uh, the Joss Whedon would have uh, Shakespeare brunches. He would have everybody come over, have brunch, assign everybody a part, we'd sit in his backyard in this gorgeous little garden and, and, and we'd eat a play. Fantastic time. A lot of time. Good time. He said, one day we should film one of these. And we did. I would arrive at that uh, brunch with, uh, I had just been awarded, this, uh, at this particular time, I had just been awarded the Saturn Award for being the man of tomorrow. <laughs> Here's the catch, tomorrow never comes. <laughs> the award is a, like a, a golden wave holding the planet Saturn on a big black base. I tied a string around it, put it around my neck, and I greet him with, hey, give him a big hug, and now this thing between you, oh, I keep forgetting I'm wearing this. <laughs> that was the basis of Captain Hammer. <laughs> super into himself. Super stupid. <laughs> Doesn't know how stupid he is. <laughs> Zach Whedon, I think, wrote uh, a fantastic line, not in the show, it was in a, one of the comics that came out later, Dr. Horrible comic, where Dr. Horrible was running away after, I don't know, messing with some parking meters because he was always so diabolical. <laughs> and he runs around the corner and he slams right into Captain Hammer. And he says, careful buddy, what if I had been a knife? <laughs> That's exactly the kind of stupid to prepare yourself. Captain Hammer. Here you go. Hi, Nathan. Hi. Um, my question is that I know that you 
you love gadgets? I do. I do. Everybody. I love gadgets. So, if you were to be offered an infomercial that you had to hawk one specific product, what would you do? Excellent question. I am totally and completely into free power. Solar, wind, I'm into it guys. I am into it. They're coming out with a solar panel that looks like a Christmas tree with a bunch of little solar cones on it and they all rotate. Because a solar panel has to be heat resistant. That's why they're so expensive. But if you rotate them, one side's always cooling. So it's cheaper. You get these Christmas tree cones of solar power. They've got a wind machine that looks like a jellyfish. It's like a dome with like blades on the bottom. It's about three feet high. You take it to your roof. You just screw it in. You put it on your roof and you plug it into an outlet on your house. You got wind power. That easy. That's the kind of stuff I like. Has anyone seen this video for solar freaking roadways? I have seen the future and it is solar freaking roadways. Panels in our streets with sensors that can know if someone's crossing the street ahead of you with lights so it lights up and says careful there's an animal, there's a kid, there's a pedestrian. Parking lots that can change their lines. Because that's awesome. <laughs> Heaters in them so you never have to worry about snow plows anymore. <laughs> so, in the rest of the world, when water gets cold, it gets hard. In little tiny pieces that look like snowflakes. And they're called snowflakes. I watched a very interesting little video that said if a 15% efficient solar panel was put onto every roadway in the United States of America, we would be the power brokers for the entire planet. And it's free! That excites me. We don't have enough rare earth metals. I didn't hear a word of that, and I don't like your negativity. There's always an answer. There's never a reason not to move forward. Can't be done. Solar power? Can't be done. Free power? Can't be done. I disagree. It can, and it will be done. Lady? Swear to God. Go get in your SUV without your, what you call that, catalytic converter and drive in circles. I uh, will no longer buy uh, motor cars. Only electric. I'm only buying electric cars. My next car is going to be electric. Drive an electric car now. Love it. Have a great time. Does that answer your question? <laughs> Come grab a watch. <laughs> Hello, Angel. Hi. First of all, what's your name? Marina. I'm Nathan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Second, I like your hat. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just want to get up out of the way. Um, I love fireflies so much. And, uh, How old are you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but the question I'm, supposed to, I'm asking is, on the cast, who was your favorite actor to act with? In Firefly? Wow. <laughs> this is gonna sound stupid. Uh, it's really, I don't have a favorite. I don't have a favorite. Joss Whedon made a very conscious effort to have wonderful people uh, who could take the language. He, it's a different kind of way of speaking on that show, wasn't it? it was, we called it Joss speak, but he had a tiny little neat poetic way of speaking. And we had to learn every word of it. You couldn't be one word off. 
It's exactly like this for a reason. And that was our job. And everybody took it very seriously. And everybody took that odd language and made it sound so real. Right? The hardest part of my job was being in scenes with these amazing actors. And I'm watching the work they do. And I'm saying, oh my God, this is going to be such an amazing episode of television. She's doing such a good job right now. And he is being amazing just sitting there. And he didn't, why is no one saying anything right now? <laughs> it's my line. That was the hardest part of my job, not being distracted by the incredible work going on around me. Um, one of the greatest part of my jobs was I, when you have an episode that's uh, a little more wash in it, I got to spend a week with Alan Tudyk. When I had an episode that was more about we're going to go do some heavy duty fighting and stuff, I got to hang out with Adam and Gina. And when it was about like all oh, Quaker weird hippy dippy stuff, it was made song. <laughs> Summer. <laughs> we used to blame Summer for everything. <laughs> so if anybody ever made a mistake, we just go, ah, Summer. <laughs> Even when she wasn't there. <laughs> Excellent question. Would you like a watch? I got a, this is my last one. 
pace. Shut up. And I want you to have it. Do you have one more question? Okay, but you only get one watch. Will you sing with me? You go first. <laughs> All that matters, taking matters into your own hands. Wait! This is a lot of fun, you guys. I'm gonna tell you right now. Just take stock for a moment. Evaluate. This is fun, right? Strangers. But you all got something in common, don't you? A little bit like family. My family. Is there anyone here who's actually my family? Actually, literally related to me. Actually. Stand up, please. Family. How much is your wedding? Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, uh, do you feel like even after, you know, there's been some time since Serenity came out, and do you feel like if Firefly were to have a reboot, if the cast would come together and would work on it again? Yes. <laughs> Does that mean like it could possibly happen? Could it possibly happen? Well, I guess there's the... Therein lies the rub, right? I don't know. But I don't know. Could it possibly? It happened once. It's been 10, 12 years? It's been 12 years. It's been 12 years. It happened. Could it happen again? In 12 years. <laughs> India asks a smarter man than me. Like Johnson. <laughs> I'm... I'm out of watches. But I would like you to have this.
except for the part where it ends. <laughs> it's coming. Prepare yourself now. <laughs> You're great. I love you guys. Hey, Ethan, how are you doing? I'm good, thanks. You? What's your name? My name's Daniel. A pleasure, Daniel. Daniel. My wife, Daniel. Pleasure. I got an autograph from you. So oh, excellent. Nice to see you. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, my question to you is this. Um, we've seen a lot of Firefly characters. Um, uh, not actual characters, but people come and guest star and cameo in Castle. Are you anticipating any future people come on that haven't already? <clears throat> I would love that. Um, if you were in Dallas or have watched that panel online, forgive me for this story, I want Alan Tudyk to come guest on Castle. The story is, the story is another writer cop duo doing the exact same thing Castle and Beckman are doing, just a cheaper version. <laughs> and Alan's the writer, and he's very, he's English, and he's really, really pompous and aggressive, and looks down on everyone. And when it really comes down to it, and there's guns and there's people shooting, think they're actually dangerous. He's actually not in the show at all, he's from Des Moines! And you can't believe this is happening, he just wanted to make a buck! Castle, 
comes up and says, I'm your number one fan. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, thanks. I sign it. He walks up and I say, how far they fall? <laughs> we threw that in there. That was not part of the episode. That was just something we threw in there. For shits and giggles. Makes it into the show. Helps to be the director in the part. <laughs> also, he's an incredibly fun director. We do a lot of fun things. Like he'll say, hey, Nathan, um, uh, uh, you know, we, we need you to work uh, you know, X amount of minutes into your lunch time. Is that all right? Absolutely on the condition that tomorrow, when Jonathan Frakes starts the day, rather than saying action on the first scene, he says, engage. <laughs> We all laughed, it was great. Following day, he remembered. <laughs> Nothing quite like hearing that huge set of logs bellow out, engage! <laughs> and may I just do this? in the faces, and I can see your faces. <laughs> and I can hear your cheers, and I can hear your clapping. And I feel like we're all on the same page in a lot of ways. I'm a fan like you. Say it again. I'm a fan like you! I can't hear that enough. I love you guys. Thank you. 